So what I'm going to share today is going to kind of bring up some things that are going to clear up the waters and allow people of God to move forward. This uh, title is called The Kingdom Always Advances. And the interesting thing is, I don't like the word. I, I don't like words like always and never. But this is one I'm sure of. The kingdom always advances. How many people have felt frustrated where they are? Or do you feel stuck in a rut that you can't get out of? Like some, some people, it, it seems like their progress is in limbo. Where am I going with life? And all these kind of things we get, we get in this place. And the Lord, I said, well, what if everybody's not in there? He said, well, how about this one? How many people feel like they could be further along? And then I was like, all the rest of your hands, thank you very much. We all know we could be further along. And the key strategy of the enemy is to get you going in the direction that doesn't really matter. In other words, like, you can put all your effort into this. Like, you could read business articles till the cows come home, till Jesus comes back, till nothing's left. It doesn't matter what you read. It matters what you do with the knowledge. It doesn't matter what you read about. It, it, it's, none of it's relevant. There's so many idle things we could do that until we learn that it's the action behind and the intention behind our heart that really makes the earth move. The intention in our heart, like when you give, it releases, it releases, it releases. And when you start releasing in the earth, it starts rippling out from you. And it starts drawing the right things to you. Depends on what you're giving. It could be drawing other things to you. So it's important what you're giving out. But I feel like your reality is about to be challenged by the word of God. Because the kingdom is always advancing. The kingdom is always advancing. So when you feel like you're stuck, that should challenge you. Because I'm telling you that you're advancing. And you don't even know it. Okay, so you are a design to you are designed to advance. And I'm just going to read a couple things out of Genesis 1. God said, "Let there be light." And I could get really excited about this and get super lost. So I, this is I, I love Genesis 1. He said first, "Let there be light." Guess what happened? Now I need everybody on this one. This is a really it's not really tough, but I want to start someplace easy for everybody. Okay? In the beginning, God said, let there be light. And what happened? That's pretty good. So most of you get it. God said it and it happened. It didn't kind of happen. And interesting point I'll bring up in a second. Then he said, let there be firmament or expanse. And he made a heaven and an earth. He basically separated heaven from earth. The spirit from the natural. You might say. Then he said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together and let dry land appear. So he brought, started bringing things together. And then on the fourth day, he said, let the earth bring forth vegetation. Guess what? Plants started growing. Stuff started happening. Okay. Then he said, let there be lights in the firmament. Now, interesting, he created light on day one. But sun and stars didn't appear. Did you ever think about that? Day five is when the actual sun appeared in the sky. And that's what you call light. But God has a better light, a brighter light. In fact, what's really puzzling is that he had plants growing without light. Sunlight. Because he doesn't need it. <laughs> he just glows all by himself. And in fact, uh, in Proverbs, it says the first thing that God created was me. Because wisdom was the light. See, wisdom illuminated all things and made it obvious this is the things of God and this is the things of darkness. See, he illuminated, she illuminated. God first made wisdom and she came on the scene and she said, this is God and this is dark. 
She made it real clear, made a dividing line so that no one would ever have to question. You always know inside. Come on. You don't have to say, well, I didn't know that was in the Bible. Come on. Something in you says, am I living for me or am I living for love? It's really simple stuff. So it goes on. Let the, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures. And it was. Right? It was. It didn't. Think about it. So all these things, we got a couple good days in the life of God. A couple good days in the life of God. Here he goes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Guess what? It all happened. It all happened, right? So why do you think that day six didn't? You think you were made. But you weren't made. You were made in the image of God. That means... If you don't look like love, if you don't look like Jesus, then somebody's been lying to you. Because every other thing, listen to the creator. And if you don't listen, then you're out of alignment. And something's been telling you a different story. If you've been listening to a different story, I don't know if you've ever been out of alignment, but it kind of causes pains where there shouldn't be pains. You know, and if you live a life that's out of alignment, there's pains where there shouldn't be pains. And then you say, like, why is this 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 way? And why is this this way? I feel frustrated. I should be further along. Ah, because the alignment. So God starts focusing on the alignment. He starts focusing on what's really causing the struggle, what's really causing the pain. So he said, on... Let us make man in our own image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over all the creeping things that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. And in his image God created him. Both male and female he created them. Then God blessed them. God blessed them. You have been blessed by God. God had one prayer, and he prayed it over you. And this is the prayer he said. Be fruitful. Thank you, sir. Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air. In fact, he even felt like repeating himself in case you missed it the first time. And over every living thing that moves on the earth. That does include demonic activity, by the way. It's on the earth, right? It, what it doesn't include is having dominion over man. But that's the only thing we think of when we hear about dominion, isn't it? <laughs> Uh-oh. Did I lose y'all? Like, like, I just, like, the whole room just went. That's why you want to be boss. That's why you want the mic. I mean, this is the silly stuff that we do that... Needs to just kind of like, let's just turn some light on this thing. Let's just get it out there and talk about it for a second. Because the reality is that the Lord has better plans for you. And he has a straighter path for you. And so the kingdom is always advancing. God's always moving forward. But he made us in his image and his likeness. So if he made you in his image and in his likeness, who could have changed it? Did plants ever stop being plants did the earth go away because you had a bad day you can have a bad day and it's not going to change your image or your likeness because the reality is that even if you're not aligned God has a perfect lens of love that overlooks you and says I don't know what you guys see I look at him and I just see, the, who is my boy? I, I know you don't get it, but if you've had children, you at least got it. And then they, maybe they made a mess in their drawers. And then you forgot that they were so beautiful and lovely. Because you're so temporary. Like with, oh, look, they're the best ever. Oh, I just love you no matter what. Oh. Here, Roy. I, I'm a grandfather now. I, I get it better than ever. I mean, it's like, woo, oh, Jesus, I enjoyed that moment here. <laughs> Somebody, 
<laughs> Somebody help. So the baby, the baby thing is like really helped me. My kids were, were I, I married the, uh, the, the pre-built family. It was really nice, but I married the pre-built family. I had a wife and two kids. We didn't have a half a kid, but it was supposed to be 2.5. And um, so we never got the 0.5 or the dog. So that's good because they make messes too. And uh, we, I, I came into this world, and uh, now that I've had a grandbaby, I get it all better. Because it's, it's, it's not only like a dad, but it's like a granddad. I said, like, I just skipped through the nonsense. I just got right into the real good stuff. The good days, and here goes the bad days. Good times, bad times. I know I have my share. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. Crazy things come to mind sometimes. Okay, so here's the thing. We have to have dominion. We were called to have dominion. Everybody knows kind of what that means, but it is very twisted. In fact, I, I kind of cringe when I think about people that go like, yeah, let's have dominion. Let's go take, a, a, you know, take over. And I'm just kind of like, ah. Oh. But the problem is it's still true even if you don't like how it sounds. And if you like how it sounds too much, you forget the other part. Having dominion requires you having dominion in his image. You're still having dominion, and you're still having it in his image. Gets worse yet, no people are involved. So you can't even, like, boss nobody around. What? I served all this time. Now you say, I'm almost at the top. And you say, I got to serve more. Jesus said, oh, the greatest among you. Guess what? Boss. He gets to serve them all. <laughs> Y'all ain't with me yet, but that's okay. Y'all going to get there. I'm real, I'm real happy about this because the power of God so defies the logic of man. So defies the logic of man. Most of us that said, I feel frustrated, please, everyone in here, I want you to keep that devil right there in, the, in your crosshairs. Because we're about to nail that thing. You're about to shoot it, it will never visit you again. Because the thing that you think is frustrating you, has kept you going in the wrong direction. Having dominion is what God made you to do. But he had, had you to do it. You know, how, many, how much authority have you taken over the fact that you reign over all the creatures in the earth? How much authority have you taken over the things that come and pillage your life? And you say like, Having dominion over man, but you haven't even taken, but you don't, you're not even called to that. You're called to have dominion over all the creeping things, over the animals, over the air, birds of the air. And by the way, if you really put spiritual things on them, birds of the air actually represent how the word gets out. It says, you know, when you have secrets and you're talking about them behind closed doors, not that any of you would ever do that gossiping stuff, but what it says is little birdies like to take them. And they take them out for you, and they deliver them. The little birdie's job is delivery package from God. Things that are hidden in secret will always be revealed in the open. The whole the word is just so awesome. So here it is. God intimately formed, fashioned by cutting. He shaped us out. He listen to this. It says he he. He prepared us as a reed for writing or like a stick for an arrow. In other words, you were made with such intention that he had you assigned for exactly what he wanted you to do. And he has that assignment on you and you can't change what he made you to be. You can't change what he made you to do. And so all the best thing you could do is stop. If you're an arrow, don't try to be a pen. It would be a bad day, and it would be really awkward. You know, you, you can be, probably dip an arrow in ink and try to write with it, but it's tough. And so a lot of times we're trying to do what the creator made somebody else. Oh, that's how you do it? No, that's not how you do it. Don't look at me. Look at him. He's got the blueprints in his hand. I have no idea what's going on with me. How am I going to know what he's doing with you? 
But he's got the drawings laid out, ready to be asked some questions. He's got his own prayer line. Come on, Natasha. He's ready to answer your prayers. So God blessed them and saying, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion. So he said it all. He did not say, I'm going to repeat it one more time because I just feel like this one's one of those that just hasn't been heard before or we just don't like to hear it. He did not say have dominion over mankind. It's really important because leading has nothing to do with dominion. Leading has to do with serving. Leading has to do with serving. I mean, that should demotivate a good portion of the room right there. Like, oh. But we're going to get rid of that stuff because that's the carrot you've been chasing. Some, some people, I mean. The Lord God had formed, this is how intimately he cared. The Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and then he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and he became a living being. This is the intimacy God took for man. And then it says even better, like if you're like, well, that was just for Adam. Not really. Because in Jeremiah, it was very clear how intricate he's, I didn't know he was a knitter. I was kind of like, that's not too manly, God. But he knit me together in my mother's womb. He literally fashioned and formed me, taking care of every detail. My DNA is programmed to succeed. My, pro, my DNA is programmed to be what he's called me to be. And I, if you get that, you'll stop looking at the wrong things and start looking at what he's prepared. Because if you are already what you are, you know, could you imagine... Driving down Ritchie Highway, and a 747 is driving northbound because somebody told him he was a car. And that's what we're doing. I usually tell the Eagle, Eagle Chicken story, but I had to come up with a new one. So now you're a 747, okay? You just got to get the picture. You weren't made for all this beat down, abuse, woe is me, oh me, oh why, oh. And I'm so frustrated. I'm so, I can't get nowhere. I, blah, blah, blah. And God's like, dude, do that. I don't like to be biased. You weren't made for that kind of thinking. So that kind of thinking has completely contaminated your ability to fly. Okay? Your ability to fly, I, I hope, is going to be contained in today's message. God said it this way. Adam made the biggest blunder of his life, not telling Eve all the stipulations of the garden. Or maybe she knew, but he still could have tackled her or something, you know. Watch this. Watch this. It's the passive ways of man that allows the enemy to get the strongest foothold. The passivity of our lives has allowed the enemy to plunder. And if we're going to stay passive, you can bet, mark my words, that you're going to get a lot more where that came from. He hates you more now than ever because you're in this building. He says, oh, you think you're going somewhere. Well, you have to actually get enough gumption to say, oh, yes, I am. You ready to do this? See, so I tell some people sometimes, you moved into this house if you want to do evil, you should run for your life. At least if you get far away, the enemy won't think you're like, like you're kind of like on the good guy's side, but kind of playing the secret agent. Well, when the bullets are flying, dude, you need to be out of dodge. Like if you're going to do you, you should already be on the enemy's side. It's safer there. We're winning. We're going to win. Don't worry about that. If we're going to win, you, be, you, should, it, it, you don't want to do it God's way. You should get out of Dodge. So, God said it this way. Adam, who told you you were naked? Who told you you were naked? In fact, I could ask it this way because I had so many people excited about it. Who told you you were frustrated 
Who told you you couldn't change? Who told you that you were lonely? Who told you you needed somebody else? Or maybe you need some chemicals to help your happy self. The reality is, who told you those lies? If you can't figure out that, then you'll never figure out why you can't go where God has called you to live. What he's called you to be. What he's already provided for you. And he's made you to be. There's nothing else he could do except for say, wake up. Hear the word of the Lord. This is as passionate as I could be for you. I only get a couple days a week to do it. But this is me hurting for you. And this is me hurting for me. Because these truths hit me first. They're a reality in my face. Of what the Lord is offering to this house. The truth is. The enemy twisted your image. But he didn't twist your image. He twisted what you saw. When you looked in the mirror. He twisted the mirror. He messed up the mirror. You started looking at the world. You start looking at GQ. You start looking at. A broad, uh, I said Broadway. I meant to say uh, the other one. Wall Street, he's, he tries to get you to look at a different image to see you. If you look at everything else to see you, you're going to feel like you're messed up. The only thing that you're supposed to look into to see you is what? The perfect law of liberty. Oh, it did say law and liberty in the same sentence. Don't that sound squirrely? The perfect Law of liberty. It doesn't say law. It says perfect. And it says law. And it says liberty. The perfect law of your freedom. To get out of the trap you're in. Is to find yourself in the word. And know this is who God made me. I ain't even gotten to my good points. I'm really excited much more than you are I think. But that's okay. If I could just get me fixed, I'll be happy and you guys like whatever, you know. It's like I'll just keep preaching to you and I'll just keep going after God, you know. Keep watching the benefits of the Lord. You are supposed to actually watch his benefits. Did you know that he said not to forget his benefits? If you'd forget his benefits, then you give and say, oh, I don't, I don't expect anything in return. But God said, I wanted to give it to you, but you didn't expect it in return. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. It might as well have not done it. So if you expect nothing in return, I'm, I'm not saying to give only to receive. I'm saying to give with the perfect heart, knowing that your God has a better one. His heart's way larger. And so in that reality, he opens these, th this door up for us all. So here we go. The kingdom is always advancing. The kingdom is always advancing. The kingdom is always advancing. So you are blessed by God to advance. You are blessed by God to advance. You're supposed to be fruitful. I think I can get most of you guys to agree with this one. Fruitfulness doesn't just mean you got a lot of it. There's the stuff you can get a lot of that ain't a lot of good. You can go to the dumpster. You can go to the barnyard. There's a lot of stuff you can get. But a lot of it ain't necessarily good. You can even get a lot of apples. But if they're all were good six months ago, they're not good apples. So what I'm saying is when we're talking about fruitfulness, we're not just talking about quantity. Even though I know like that's the best thing to hear. Come on, more money, Lord. Yes, Jesus, I receive it. But you can have more ones. They're not as good as more Benjamins. For example, so no matter where you go with this, the reality is, you know, if, you, if you're not working on your love, for example, the fruit called love. By the way, love is a fruit of what? Spirit. Somebody's good. So if love is a fruit of the spirit, why do you try so hard to love? This is a Selah. 
It's a deep question. Because we try to do things only God does. It's like that's God's job. Hey, you want to do my job? I came down to help you love, and you're doing my job. Here you are trying again. It's like you don't try to love. You be loved because you've been loved. You be loved. You receive love. So, Freddie, you were made to receive. Just got to watch what you're receiving. Because whatever you receive lots of is what you're full of to give out. So if you're full of lots of receiving for you, then you're going to give out lots of you. And everybody's going to hear it like, oh, it's all about you. And they're going to be like, something's weird with that guy. <laughs> so that's the problem with the receiving is what you're receiving. So we're going to be talking a little bit about receiving in a way. I just wanted to tie back to Freddie's point. Make him feel special. He's so loved. He's so loved. My daughter's studying for finals today. She's weak. She should have been at church. Tracy left the hospital to be at church. Alexis, she'll get it. I told, I told my kids that I never missed church just because I had finals. And I had 19 credit hours in one, in one semester. And I was working 32 hours a week. And it was like three math classes at the same time. I did almost lose my mind. I will, will go ahead and throw that in there. But I figured if anyone was going to help me lose it, let me go to church. The rest of the week was questionable. So. <laughs> okay. You are blessed by God to advance. You're supposed to be fruitful, not just in quantity, but also in quality. Now, here's what else he said, that you're supposed to have dominion. And then later on, you find out in Genesis that what did he start doing? He started finding and naming. A key to where you're at is what you've been naming it. Like you name it like, yo, what's going on? Hey, I'm stuck. That's your name for where you're at. Not only are you not, not only are you stuck, you're not going anywhere. Because you just told me you're stuck. I asked you, you said, yeah, that's me. I said, what are you? You said, I'm frustrated. Come on, you, you just like go with it. Because it's just so natural. Because everybody else does it. Let's do it too. And so you go naming all the things that the world's trying to set up for you. And you agree with the world instead of agreeing with God. The perfect law of liberty written out for you. Displayed for you in his love to see you set free. To see you moving forward in life. To see you having victory all the days of your life. To see goodness and mercy following you. Chasing you down. The, the world tells us to chase goodness and mercy. God says chase me. They'll find you. Seek first the kingdom of God. His righteousness. All these things shall be added unto you. Every, the last thing, every fruit has a seed. Close. Every fruit has se a seed. An interesting thing about seeds is God designed seeds because seeds help produce more trees. Your seed was designed to produce in the earth more like kind. So the reason why it's important who you are is because you can only produce like kind. So if you're frustrated, you're going to be producing some like kind. You're going to have a family and, and friends and you're going to have commiserators on your team. And you don't want that kind of team. Richard's not here to say or you'd be like the Redskins. Oh, send that to Richard. I did. Just for Richard. Hey, hey, hey. I can't say Dallas. I cannot say Dallas is any better. They, they did make, here, let me give this just to you, Blake. They did make a program for you called The Biggest Loser. <laughs> I, never, I never get to preach about football because I never watch it, but I, I like to pretend for all the guys in here. Hey. All right, so every fruit has a seed. In other words, the seed was meant to be picked up and enjoyed by somebody consumed so that that seed would go far places. In fact, where I live, where I'd go visit with my grandmother, she had raspberry bushes. 
and the birds would eat the raspberry bushes, and raspberries would be everywhere. They're called, the, the birds just take them everywhere. On your car, windows, every place. You got raspberries. Without your mind going to Joseph's place right now, come on, change your face, Joseph. The fruit of what you're giving out when you, when you, when you give out from your, from your tongue, it's to be, somebody's supposed to take it in and they're going to become what you're saying. So, you know, so we are the environment, the, right now we are the environment, not only of what God said, but what everybody else has said. And we've let them speak them without even saying, that's not true about me, buddy. You're going to be nobody. Oh, that's not true about me, buddy. I told Preston here, I, I said, how's that toe going? They, now they tried to, couldn't take his life, couldn't take his foot. They did steal gold by or while he was passed out, but they said they didn't need that. It's extra parts, you know, hey. Doctors are awesome. I do love doctors. I honor doctors. I thank you for everything that they're here for, Lord. But here's the thing. They did a lot of lying to Preston. So he ended up not dying. He ended up not losing his feet. He ended up not even losing his toes. So today I said, what about that? So I said, what about your big toe? They said that was going to be lost. He said they can't even take the big toe. So... The reason why I'm sharing that is because the doctors are telling you from their best medical practice that this is the best that what happens to people in your state. And this is what's going to happen to you. And you have a choice to say, oh my gosh, I guess I receive that. Like the doctors told you this morning. Or you say, I don't receive it. Because that's not my inheritance. You are blessed by God to advance to bear fruit, and to multiply. And so for you to multiply, you have to first be a good tree so that you produce good fruit, so that the people around you, if you produce more like you and you're in a negative state, you're producing a whole environment of people to bring you down. You're actually producing the people that will tear you down. But in fact, once God stopped speaking to people, the law multiplied so many times that no one could keep it. By the time the Pharisees came... Jesus said, you're so evil that you speak, you seek, I know you guys all thought Jesus was so awesome and loving and friendly, but sometimes love is honest, and here's what he said to the Pharisees. He said, you seek the whole earth to find one convert or disciple, to make him twice the son of hell as you. I'll point to the ceiling so no one thinks it's. <laughs> no, it's. <laughs> Just kidding. So, um, ah, thank you, Lord. So here's the last part. What is your seed you are releasing? What is your seed you are releasing? Your words are a wind over a reed formed with an intention. Your words are a wind which is called pneuma, which is the same thing that God breathed into you. He gave you your breath so that you could breathe over the reed. And then that would be articulated by intention so that you would form the world around you. You have exactly the world that you've made. I'm not saying that if you're the product of somebody else's misery, that that's the world you made. That's the world they made, and they're trying to drag you into. Now, the question is, because they're miserable, do you have to be miserable? Because they're hurting, do you have to be hurting? Because they're a molester, do you have to become a molester? Or do you have to be a victim? Do you have to be struggling the rest of your life because of somebody else's ill will, ill intention, or just... Per, just twisted identity. And so the answer obviously is a resounding no. 
And it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those that love it shall eat its fruit. I re- there was a, God, there's a, a translation called the God translation. I love this. It says, those who love to talk will, ha- will have to eat their own words. Those who love to talk, you get to eat your own words. And in other words, those that love it will eat the fruit thereof. You get to eat what you say. That's the course that you keep serving. So you get more of it. And then you say it again and you get even more. And then you wonder why this is a cycle. Because you keep saying it. It's not really that deep, huh? But the enemy makes it so crazy and difficult to understand. But I'm going to just share this with you. This is my pride and joy. The rat race of life consists of running on the wrong wheel for a carrot that never satisfies. The rat race of life consists of running on the wrong wheel for a carrot that never satisfies. I'm going to say it one more time because I really want you to get it. The rat race of life consists of running on the wrong wheel for a carrot That will never satisfy. You are made to be satisfied by only one thing. The psalmist said it this way. One thing have I desired of the Lord. And that one thing I will seek is to know you. Is to know you. That's it. There's nothing outside of that. And if you don't know him... Even if you go to church every week, the main thing he says in all his parables about not letting people come in, rather you're five virgins and you were just, you just ran out of oil, God will understand. No, he said, I don't even know you. Because if I knew you, you would have brought oil. Because if I knew you, you would have brought that one thing. It's only one thing you were supposed to bring to this party. Another thing, he calls it a garment. One thing you needed to wear to this party, it's called the wedding garment. And if you aren't dressed, you don't know the one thing was to know me. And so he brings this whole world of chaos and confusion and misery down to one thing so that it would be easy for everybody. And everybody goes, well, you don't know what I've been through. And I say, that's because you don't know the one thing. If you knew the one thing, you wouldn't be telling me about your hundred things. Your hundred things should not be overriding the one thing. One thing have I desired of the Lord. Mm. Rather be a doorkeeper. Come on. So, here's, here's some carrots. I wrote down some carrots for you. These are the carrots of life. I just got a few. You probably got your own carrots. In fact, the thing you said you were frustrated about where you were going or how you weren't going there, that carrot that was frustrating you is actually something that even if you got a hold of it, it would never satisfy you. Like if I had my own house, well, then you'd have your own bills. Does bills satisfy? <laughs> if you had a spouse. Do you think that would satisfy you? The ice is thin there. Okay, I'm coming back. Easy. Step gently away from that one. They can satisfy you, but if you are not satisfied on the inside, there's nothing that could satisfy you. If you don't get the one thing, what do you think you're going to get? Oh, sorry. No. Okay, Tracy, pay attention. <laughs> Here, here's some carrots for you, okay? So I just gave you, I, I need my own house. But that wasn't on my list, so it was extra. Kids say, once I get to go to school, I want to go to kindergarten. Once I go to school, it will be great. Teenagers say, once I get out of school, it will be so awesome. College students definitely say, Once I get out of this place, I could actually make some money and life will be perfect. Wrong answer again. Athletes say, after hours and hours and hours a day, training, 
Once I get that gold medal, I'll be truly satisfied. Broke people say, once I earn that million dollars, shorty, then life will be perfect. Business owners say, once I have the right people, this will be perfect. It just seems to never end. Retirees say, once I can get some free time, and I'm saying, what are you doing with the rest of it? Because everybody has the same amount of time, and mine gets consumed with all this stuff. And the one thing that the Lord wants you to get will provide quality for all the other things. So I can go to my job that wants to work me like a pack mule, and I can go in there, and I have a different mindset of why I'm even there. I'm not here for me. Paychecks are nice. But that's just goodness and mercy following me. I'm here because there's a kingdom to be known about. I haven't met anybody above my VP, but he knows quite frankly where I stand. He knows just perfectly, and we had some conversations. He's a little bit confused about my situation. (laughs) It was so funny. I was negotiating, and he thought I was, like, kind of pulling his leg. So then we were driving in the car for, like, an hour, and he actually figured out that I was actually telling him the truth. <laughs> He's like, are you really doing that? <laughs> what? And it's like, his head exploded. It was a bad mess. <laughs> so, so here's the carrot. You guys heard the carrot. You're always chasing after those next, that next carrot. And no matter what it is, it will not satisfy because there's only one. You're good there. So how about this? What are the wrong wheels I keep running on? You guys know what wheels I'm talking about, right? I used to, when I was little, I had the little hamster. That guy would run for days. And you're like, dude, you're not going anywhere. You think you'd give up. And the Lord is asking a question. Dude, you've been running on that thing for a long time. You think you'd give up. See, because the thing you're running on isn't going toward the one thing. It's going to the carrot you think is going to satisfy. The one thing is that direction, and your wheel is going that direction. After the carrot that once you get, you'll find out that just opened Pandora's box to new opportunities. New opportunities. So, at the bottom line, some of these wheels work, 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 and more work. You guys all know that wheel. Come on. If 40 hours don't do you, 50 just might. Come on, I can't pay my, hour, my bills at 50 hours. Maybe 60 will. Maybe two jobs, then I'll do 80. And then eventually you figure out you just got a problem that you haven't been satisfied by the one thing. So you blow your money trying to find happiness every other way. And you end up with the American situation of too many bills, not enough income, trapped like a rat, running in the wrong direction. I, I, I love corporate America. You guys might say, oh, that's terrible. Well, I love it. We got the freest country in the world. It's amazing. But I can go to the job and preach the good news. And then I can go alone and say, God, I don't know what I'm doing here. Help! And then he shows me, shows me favor and shows me ideas and makes me a solution generator for my own company. And that's what he wants to do for you. Lance Wallnow said, you get paid in life according to the size problem you can solve. I said, that's pretty good. Commit to memory. The people I work with are impossible. This is another wheel, right? They're all impossible. So you're actually even blessing them with the impossibility of changing, which is just genius. So I want to know why we got to just figure this fight out because I think I'm right. I know I'm right, and you need to know I'm right. That's a great wheel getting you in a great place. How much have I, look how much I've been through. I'm such a victim. That wheel is going in an obvious direction, and it's not toward Jesus. I understand you've been a victim, but that wheel of self-pity And woundedness and hurt 
is not going toward Jesus. And I'm telling you, Jesus, I mean, God has a bowl of every tear that we've cried. He understands and he relates, but he also obeys his word. He puts his word above his name. In other words, in other words he is the lover of your soul, but he can't love you beyond what word he's established for you. So he's given a word to establish, and he can't be the lover of your soul if you're in an impossible place for him to love. He can love you, but he can't get through. So today, he's trying to. It's too late. That's my favorite one. It's too late. I've messed up too many things. How about this one? It's too hard to change. Or it's too hard. They'll never change. That's, that's, the, that's actually the carrot. That's the bad carrot. You're looking for them to change so you could be happy. I get it. I get it. It's going to work really well for you. Because you're changing the wrong person. Just saying. Wheels. So these are the wheels, right? But God wants to change this wheel into from work, work, work to learn how to pray. Pray, pray. So that what you do prospers. So that the enemy doesn't get into the mix. So that the the the... When you get on the job, you're working your butt off because you're a Christian, not being lazy because you're a Christian. You're not evangelizing so you don't have to work. At <laughs> I get it. You, that's just not a good witness. Um, people are impossible. Well, you need to change the possible. In other words, here's the thing. If you look to change people and they're not changing, it's because you're trying to change the wrong thing. God's made a special reason why you're there. With this opportunity, and you just need to figure out what it is so that you can help them get where they're going. It's the love of God. And I don't know exactly what that love looks like, but God has a special plan for every person in your life. Okay? It, who's right, and God is more interested in how to make it right. Who cares who's right? How do we make it right from here? Right? How much... I've been through should be like, look what Jesus went through just for me. How much you've been through, no, look at what Jesus has been through for you. For you, to show you how much he loved you. How much God so loved you. It's too late, I've messed up too many things. Should lead you right to the right wheel. There's no time to waste. I'm Moses, it's 80. I've been sitting on this dusty sheep hill for 40 years. I've been a murderer and now I feel like worthless, and I'm, I've messed up too much. And God starts talking to you and says, get up. You don't have no time to waste, old man. 80 years old, sitting there on the hill. Just sitting on the hill, wasting away. It's time to get started. It's time to get started. He lived to 120, serving the Lord in some of the most amazing miracles that ever happened. Because he decided to get up. And stop saying it was too late. Okay? It's too hard to change. Well, guess what? With man, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Tracy, I want you to come up here and read this real quick. Holy mackerel. We're going to read this. Ecclesiastes. Right here? Yep. Ecclesiastes 2, 1 through 11. I said in my heart, come now, I will test you with myrrh. Therefore, enjoy pleasure. But surely this also was vanity. I said of laughter, madness. And of myrrh, what does it accomplish? I searched in my heart how to gratify my flesh with wine while guiding my heart with wisdom and how to lay hold on folly so I might see what was good for the sons of men to do under heaven all the days of their lives. I made my works great. I built myself houses, planted myself vineyards. I made myself gardens and orchards. I planted all kinds of fruit trees. I planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. I made myself water pools from which to the water, the growing trees of the groves. I acquired male and female servants. I had servants born in my house. Yes, I had greater possessions of herds and flocks than all who were in Jerusalem before me. I also gathered for myself silver and gold and the special treasures of kings and of the providence. 
I acquired male and female singers and delights of the sons of men and musical instruments of all kinds. So I became great and excelled more than all who were before me in Jerusalem. Also, my wisdom remained with me. Whatever my eyes desired, I did not keep from them. I did not withhold my heart from any pleasure, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my reward for all my labor. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had done and on the labor in which I had toiled, and indeed all was vanity. And grasping for the wind, there was no profit under the sun. I think that sums up the futility of chasing after anything but one thing. It's only one thing that matters, really, guys. Proverbs starts out as like this huge book of wisdom. Then Ecclesiastes, he starts having wisdom fall apart because satisfaction wasn't there. Until finally, the author ends up with the Songs of Solomon and says, Aha, I found the one thing, the lover of my soul. See, the author's progression is quite amazing. He actually, I think he did a couple psalms too, but, um, but it's fascinating to see the author's uh, progression because frustration and futility should you lead you to the right question, to the right carrot, to get on the right wheel. Okay, the kingdom is always advancing, so it should lead you to the question, what is the kingdom advancing now for me what is the kingdom advancing right now for me because you said i'm in a place of frustration and that only means you're not going where you want i almost got to say la a couple just a couple did look confused what i'm saying is frustration is a byproduct of my life not going in my direction there is a different guy orchestrating. There's a different composer than you. And he's got more important things right now in mind than your perfect happiness. In fact, he's kind of looking a lot more toward what he needs to develop next for you to be that tree that he's already called you and purposed for you. So he actually takes great delight in his kingdom advancing on the inside of you. So the kingdom of God's within you. Everybody know that scripture, right? Jesus said it. The kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God continues moving forward no matter how stubborn you think you are. Could you imagine that God says, the kingdom of God is advancing. And you say, no, it's not. Oh, it is. Don't worry. No, it's not. I'm not going. He says, oh, sure you are. You just don't know it yet. And I say, the kingdom of God has advanced many people into prison so that they could learn that the kingdom of God is always advancing. And he will get to, he will do his best to get to you. The question is, will you ever yield? Because the sooner you yield, the quicker you can go his way. And you'll find the one thing. And then you'll be delighted in everything you do. See, he wants to add the delight to your life. He doesn't want to take it from you. I used to think like God was trying to like, I was bartering. Like, what if I give up pot? What are you going to trade me for? <laughs> then I was like, gosh, I got to give up tithes too? What are you going to give me for that? And I think it's this exchange. And he's like, you really think I'm going to take from you? Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> Silly man. But it's like the, the type of, God that we serve, the goodness of God. It says if you even got a glimpse of his goodness, you change your mind about everything you're going through. One glimpse in his goodness will make you change your mind about your situation entirely. It's like a whole different perspective. The room just lit up and you get it. That's what I'm hoping that at least for one of you, I would, I hope for me, Lord, that for one thing I would live for all the days of my life. And that I will watch that that one thing percolates and dominates every area of my life. That I become a dominator of love in my environment. I dominate the atmosphere with peace. That I dominate the atmosphere with joy. And I begin to have dominion in the way that you called me to have dominion. And I stop 
resisting your advancement. And I start asking, what are you doing to advance me now? See, the key is really, what is God working on right now? Because if I work on what God's working on, I look like a genius. If I like grab dad's hand and I'm like, I'm going to help you with this big bolt. And I'm like, two. I'm like, and it turns. And I like take the wheel off the car. And I look like I'm Hulk Hogan, but I'm two. Everybody says, oh, he's so cute. And then I go around telling everybody how amazing I am at turn, taking this tire off at the age of two. The beauty of it is, if you actually align yourself with what God is doing right now in your life, you will automatically find yourself that every step that you take is ordered by the Lord and getting you exactly where you need to go. So it's the great dance to find out when he's moving forward. And we said, oh, that got a hold of you a little bit, didn't it? Well, let's back up a little bit. Let's take care of that thing in your heart. Now we can keep moving forward. So the things that you want in your life, they're not so bad. They're just like kind of got a hold of you. And so if things get a hold of you, God's most greatest intention is to get the things not holding you. Like you. Selfishness is the plague of the world. Telling you to live for you. There's no benefit in living for you. You will find yourself so miserable. So unable to be happy. If you ever want to know why we do what we do. It's because we found the one thing that makes life worth living. To give your heart to the Lord. Amen. So. Last thing. Is trust, trust the Lord. You have to learn to trust the Lord. If you, how do you know if you could trust the Lord? Well, when your bills come in and they're more than your checkbook says, do you go to the gutter? Do you go to the toilet? Do you go like downhill, freak out mode? If you go into freak out mode, you already know that you're not trusting the Lord. So what's the most important thing? God to pay your bills or God to get you to trust? The reason why many of us can't be blessed in this room is because we have trust issues with money. If God can break the trust issue, then God can bring all the money. He has no problem bringing the money. He has a problem with children that don't know how trustable their dad is. And when their dad's not trusting, he's like, no, I am trusting. Here, I'll give you a little bit more. It's like he's giving you allowance. Like, God, come on, you got, a, you got all this money, you just give me an allowance. I feel like you're like cheapskate. I said, think my dad was a cheapskate because I'm like, Dad, you make all that money. You're a chemist. So smart. And I'm like, why are you giving me no money? It's like sometimes you feel like that with God. Like, you got a cattle on a thousand hills. What do you give me? Like, one pork chop? Oh, that would be hamburger. Thank you. Jesus. I got my meats mixed up. Okay, so, so here's the point, right? He's got all this, and you're like, why do I only get this? And so the the plight of life is, why if you have it all, why don't I get any? He says, because you don't believe me. You don't trust me. So I have to keep you in a mode of trust. Look, I always provide. I always take care. I always watch over you. I always care for you. And you start going, it's always? Yep, always again. Here we go. We're just going to stay here for a while, huh? All your life, you want to stay here? We can keep doing this. But once you actually say, I'm going to step away from this thing because I just don't get it. But you're always trustworthy. So why don't we just go for it? Why don't we just go for it? Like, we don't know what's going on. <laughs> we don't understand all those fancy concepts that some of you guys might be really good with. I just know that the Lord's faithful. And if you're single, the single is a season for you to advance in. Imagine that you get into a marriage and you even have finished being single. By the way, our singles ministry is blowing up to like the, the last one. We're going to have to maybe move it out of the, the house they're in because they, they, they already blew up the house. Blake, maybe it's just the glory at your house and Brittany. But, uh, but the singles are, are really doing awesome. But here's the thing. If you're single, it's for a season to learn in who and who you trust. To learn in who, who, who's always there for you. Because your spouse will not always be there for you. And if you are single in mindset, 
with a marriage, you're going to be in a lot of trouble because you're going to get hurt all the time because in your heart you couldn't deal with being single and here they are not fulfilling your heart. What are you going to do? You're done. Toast. Finito. So the reason why you go through single well is so you can be single in marriage. I'm all good all by me. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad you're here with me. When God's there for you, it doesn't matter what else is going on. I know our singles is doing all that stuff really right, but I just wanted to say that. Servanthood is for a season. Like you have to learn how to be a servant with nothing to offer, with, with just going for it, right? Because later in life, God's going to put you at the pinnacle of life, and he's going to say, you still got that, right? He's going to expect that your leadership's risen up, but you didn't forget the first things. Serving is always God's plan. Servanthood is always God's plan. Somebody asked me to tie their shoe the other day. I said, that's the weirdest request. And I got down and tied their shoe. Because I wanted them to know something. I'm never above anything that life gives me opportunity to do. I didn't understand it, but I said, sounds like a good opportunity. I thought it was strange. It, it is strange still, but. <laughs> gratefulness. Some people are in a season where they need to learn gratefulness. If you don't get grateful now, then more will be stripped from you. It's like honor. It, honor and gratitude really go hand in hand. When, you're, when you dishonor things, they get further and further away from you. And then you get so miserable saying, like, I keep losing things. It's like, yeah, of course, you can't have what you're not grateful for. If you, if you're living in, if you have a roof over your head, but you're not grateful, you just get, don't get the roof. Are you happy, happy to be breathing? I'm not happy to be breathing. Well, it's like, okay, you got me there. I'll keep you alive. Just to spite you. It's like, you know, people, it's just crazy how all this stuff happens. And I said this earlier. Even jail may be the best advance for someone who needs a little structure. People need a little structure. God's got a lot of structure. How much do you want? He's got so much structure. You're like, I'm not, I'm not doing what anybody tells me. Yeah, God's got a lot of those people in, in structure. Nice, happy structure. Six by nine, actually, in structure. Ultimately, he'll find, he'll find the place where he gets us to a place where we're going to learn. It's because the kingdom inside of us is always advancing. I'm going to say it again. Because the kingdom inside you is always advancing. The question is, are you kind of pulling the boat anchor move on God's sailboat of your life? It's like, you you're just want to go this way so bad. This is where I wanted to go. I wanted somebody in my life so bad right now. He's like... You don't need that person in your life right now. And he's trying to take you forward. And I say it again. If you start working with what God's working on, you'll always look like a genius. You'll always look like you're anointed. You'll always look like you're just so smart, that you're so loving, that you're so peaceful. Because when you're in the Spirit, when you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, which is at war with your spirit. And when you fight a war against your own God, he's still going to win. He's going to keep advancing. And you're going to keep going. Mm -hmm. So, walking in the Spirit of God is the only way to get on the right path and to go uh, for the truest riches. So, the true riches are the one thing. And so, let's all stand to our feet. Show. Sure. See how We can, thank you, sir. We can keep going around the promised land, looking at it from far off. But your dreams are waiting for you to get on the right wheel and go after the right carrot. So you really could do yourself a lot of justice by figuring out why is it exactly that that frustrates me? Why exactly do people annoy me? Why exactly, and start thinking about life. In a whole different 
like get up in God's get up in God's seat, which is where you're seated in the spirit, and just start looking at life. How would Jesus feel about this mindset? And so God would just bring you a whole new revelation of what you're what you're there for. So Papa, Papa God, we thank you right now. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for your love, and we thank you, Lord, for great grace, getting us to our destination. We pray, Lord, that we would stop resisting you in the ways that we do, and that you would bring light and help us to not love darkness rather than light, that we would love your light, that we would love your truth, and that we would go after the things that you're going after in our hearts going after where our heart's leading us. Help us to go after those things, to find the true riches, Lord, which is the meaning of life, the reason why we're here, the reason why we're alive. And we just pray, Lord, right now for every person in this room to find that one thing so that you can start providing all the things that they need for the future and the purposes on the earth. I thank you, Lord, that we wouldn't frustrate your purposes and your plans anymore. Because we're going your way. We're in agreement. How can two walk but they're in agreement, Lord? So I pray that we'll align ourselves with the direction that you're going in our lives. And we thank you that your kingdom's always advancing. Let us not hold that destiny back for ourselves any longer. In Jesus' name.